Hello, and welcome back. This week we are going to cover base saturation. Last week I explained to the best of my knowledge on how CEC works, so I'm hoping to do the same here. So let's get up here to the whiteboard and dive into base saturation. What is it? Well, hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have a better understanding what that is. Now with base saturation, we are focusing on five elements and what, they, what the key roles they play in our soil and how that helps our plants get the nutrients they need. So the five nutrients or elements that needs balance in our soils are here as what you can see. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and hydrogen, which sodium you do not want. And as you can see here, like I said, we want to achieve balance in our soil, which we do by percentages or ratios of these five elements. And as you can see with calcium, you want to be within 65 to 80 percent. Magnesium, 12 to 20. Potassium, 4 to 8. Sodium, 0 to 1. Almost non-existent. Then lastly, hydrogen, 0 to 10 percent. So, we're going to break down each of these five and what they do to your soil when you have them balanced and what they do when they're out of balance. So, first, let's we're going to tackle calcium and magnesium because they kind of go together. It's kind of like clay and sand. How they kind of play with each other. Now calcium is a large size molecule and what that does for our soil is it helps to keep it loose and helps prevent compaction. So we get good air and water movement and good drainage which is pretty important. And the other major role it plays it is, is with nutrient uptake. This dries all the nutrients from that are in your soil and helps your plant take in much better and then it helps redirect those nutrients throughout the plant. That's pretty important I think. Now, if your percentages aren't quite up to 65%, it's going to be because of two elements. Whether it's going to be one of them or possibly both of them, which is possible. And those two elements are magnesium and hydrogen. So there's two ways we can tackle this. One is if one or both of these are out of their range and they're too high, we can work on decreasing those numbers. Or we can add lime or gypsum. If your pH is pretty high already and you're worried about increasing the pH even more, instead of adding lime, you can add gypsum. And then I'll help bring up your calcium percentages while not raising your pH. So, speaking of magnesium, let's jump right down to magnesium. Magnesium is the opposite of what calcium is. Its molecules are smaller, which gives you 
poor drainage and compacts your soil more so. So if your percentage is above 20% and you're having poor drainage in your soil, it's because of magnesium. Now, why is that important? Why do you want to more focus on getting your magnesium levels down? Well, let me tell you, if poor drainage and compacting wasn't enough to convince you to bring that number down, it also inhibits root growth, which is pretty important. You want your roots. And it also basically just decreases the overall health of your soil. And mainly because you have the poor drainage, you will get more soil um, diseases, soil-borne diseases. So if your magnesium percentages is way too high, you need to take measures to bring it down. And then there was one with my research that I came across, one thing that I thought found pretty interesting. Because we know we always think of calcium being the pH raiser. Which in fact, magnesium can actually raise your pH faster than what calcium is. So if your pH is high, it may not just because you have high calcium. Maybe from your magnesium. So, 12 to 20%. And I just got telling you that you don't want that number too high. And if we remember back to our the CEC episode and comparing this to clay, and we know how clay holds on to nutrients, we need to, depending on our soil, need to be closer to one side over the other. So if you have lighter soil, like sandy soil, you want to be closer to 18 to 20%. And then just the opposite, if you have heavier soil with lots of clay, you want to get as close as you can to 12%. But you don't want to go under 12%, otherwise you're going to disrupt that whole balance in your soil. So in a nutshell, that's calcium and magnesium. So let's tackle the next elements. There is not too much to say about these three. They play a role both for our plant and for our soil. Now we'll go with potassium first. This more so plays a role in for your plant. And we typically don't have a problem with it being too high. It's harder to get it to 8% and it's much easier to dip below 4%. And that, and the reason for that is because it's pretty easy to spike your calcium and magnesium numbers. Because if those numbers are really high, it's going to drive your potassium numbers percentages, I should say, below 4%. Now, the problem with that is if you, if calcium and magnesium are too high and you dip below 4%, the potassium in your soils can get locked up. So, we need to fix that problem. And the way we fix that problem is, one, kind of obvious, add more potassium. But the other solution to that is also to lower your calcium magnesium numbers so that we can get back at least to 4% so your plant can take that up. So now let's move on to sodium. And sodium's no good. 
there's really there's no benefits of it and how we get this number high is whether through our fertilizers um our compost our manure because manures and for the most part and the fertilizers those can contain those do contain actually I should say a good deal of, of sodium which if we add too much of that at one time it brings the percentages up and then what this does is it it forms a crust on your soil which makes it harder for water to penetrate which then in turn will make it harder for your the fertilizers that you're watering in harder to get into the soil and get into your plant and here's something else that I learned that I thought was pretty interesting sodium can also raise your pH it can actually raise your pH four times faster than calcium who knew so now we need to work on bringing that sodium down if it's too high and I already touched bases on one way and that is with your manure fertilizers not add so much of that at one time but also you can add some sulfur and what sulfur does it turns the sodium into a salt and then that salt is now easier to dissolve in the water and then can just leach out of your soil which then brings me up to my next point is to have proper drainage so that way the salt can much easier pass through so now hydrogen there's even less to say about hydrogen basically what hydrogen does with the whole scheme of the base saturation is is basically your acid it's your sulfur and the higher this percentage basically just telling you your soil is a little more acidic and if you're getting too close to 10% and if you're able to achieve this get above 10% you need to lower that down. You need to be no more than 10%. Which basically the only thing you can do is add some lime. And that will help bring down your percentage here, which then will help increase your pH levels. Which I'm guessing if you're running high uh, in your percentage, your soil is pretty acidic. So, like I said, not much to say about hydrogen. It just makes your soil more acidic, which, a very acidic soil, no good. So now that we've gone through the five elements and what range we're looking for, and in the end, we want the sum of those five elements to equal 100%. Because then we'll have 100% balance. But the other part of this is pH. And that can throw our base saturation percentages out of whack. If it's too high, the, our pH that is, it will actually increase the percentages of our base saturation. And the same with if it's too low, it'll bring that base saturation lower, which then brings our soils out of balance. So basically we need balance. We need to work on making sure our pH is balanced which is going to help us keep our base saturation in check. 
So this kind of concludes the building up of what is going on in our soil and how our soil interacts with our our plants and its ability to take up water and fertilizers. So next week we are going to be starting on the nutrients which we're going to start with the macros. So join me next week for getting to the food subject for our plants. So until next time guys I will see you later. Bye-bye.